Hello, Internet! It's 8 o'clock and we are live for another chapter of The Magic of Oz. Like three chapters left, or yeah, I think three chapters left. I think this book only has 23 chapters, and we're on chapter 21. It's 21, 22, 23, that's three chapters. So tonight, tomorrow, Sunday night is the last of this book, and then we start the final book of the Oz series! Holy cow. All right. <clears throat> oh, chapter 21, I forgot. This chapter is called The College of Athletic Arts, which I believe means we're going to discuss a Professor H.M. Wogglebug, T.E., who sounds like this, and his voice is very fun to do. I don't know why I make this face when I do his voice, but I know that I cannot make his voice sound correct without doing this face. So I assume that's what his face looks like. Let's begin. Chapter 21. Dorothy and her friends arrived at the royal palace at an opportune time, for Ozma was holding high court in her throne room, where Professor H. M. Wogglebug, T.E., was appealing to her to punish some of the students of the Royal Athletic College, of which he was the principal. This college is located in the Munchkin country, but not far from the Emerald City, to enable the students to devote their entire time to athletic exercises, such as boating, football, and the like. Professor Wogglebug had invented an assortment of tablets of learning. One of these tablets, eaten by a scholar after breakfast, would instantly enable him to understand arithmetic or algebra or any other brand of mathematics. Another tablet, eaten after lunch, gave the student a complete knowledge of geography. Another tablet made it possible for the eater to spell the most difficult words and still another enabled him to write a, with a beautiful hand. There were tablets for history, mechanics, home cooking, and agriculture, and it mattered not whether a boy or a girl was stupid or bright, for the tablets taught them everything in the twinkling of an eye. This method, which is patented in the Land of Oz by Professor Wogglebug, saves paper and books, as well as the tedious hours devoted to study in some of our less favored schools. And it also allows the students to devote all their time to racing, baseball, tennis, and other manly and womanly sports, which are greatly interfered with by studying in those temples of learning where tablets of learning are unknown. But it so happened that Professor Wogglebug, who had invented so much that, he'd that he had acquired the habit, carelessly invented a square meal tablet, which was no bigger than your little finger, but contained, in condensed form, the equal of a bowl of soup, a portion of fried fish, a roast, a salad, and a dessert, all of which gave the same nourishment as a square meal. The professor was so proud of these square meal tablets that he began to feed them to the students at his college instead of other food. But the boys and girls objected because they wanted food that they could enjoy the taste of. It was no fun at all to swallow a tablet with a glass of water and call it dinner. So they refused to eat the square meal tablets. Professor Wogglebug insisted and the result was that the senior class seized the learned professor one day and threw him into the river, clothes and all. Everyone knows that a Wogglebug cannot swim, and so the inventor of the wonderful square meal tablets lay helpless on the bottom of the river for three days before a fisherman caught one of his legs on a fish hook and dragged him out upon the bank. The learned professor was naturally indignant at such treatment, and so he brought the entire senior class to the Emerald City and appealed to Ozma of Oz to punish them for their rebellion. I do not suppose the girl ruler was very severe with the rebellious boys and girls, because she herself refused to eat the square meal tablets in place of food. But while she was listening to the interesting case in her throne room, Cap'n Bill managed to carry the golden flower pot containing the magic flower up to Trot's room without it being seen by anyone except Jellia Jam, Ozma's chief maid of honor, and Jellia promised not to tell. Also, the wizard was able to carry the cage of monkeys up to one of the top towers of the palace, where he had a room of his own, to which no one came unless invited. So Trot and Dorothy and Cap'n Bill and the wizard were all delighted of the successful end of their adventures. The Cowardly Lion and the Hungry Tiger went to the marble stables behind the royal palace where they lived while at home, and they too kept the secret, even refusing to tell the wooden sawhorse and Hank the Mule, the Yellow Hen, and the Pink Kitten, where they had been. Trot watered the magic flower every day and allowed no one in her room to see the beautiful blossoms except her friends Betsy Bobbin and Dorothy. The wonderful plant did not seem to lose any of its magic by being removed from its island, and Trot was sure that Ozma would praise it as one of her most delightful treasures. Up in his tower, the little Wizard of Oz began training his twelve tiny monkeys, and the little creatures were so intelligent that they learned every trick the wizard tried to teach them. 
The wizard treated them with great kindness and gentleness and gave them the food that monkeys love best. So they promised to do their best on the great occasion of Ozma's birthday, which we will read about tomorrow night in Chapter 22, Ozma's Birthday Party. That'll be right here at 8 o'clock on Facebook Live. Good night, everyone.